I've always had my own style. Yes, she definitely had style. But in fashion merchandising at Sanford Brown, I learned how to make it a career from industry professionals like Miss Cooper, who was really supportive. Textiles, design, marketing, we teach real fashion skills and the business of fashion. I wanted a career in fashion and Sanford Brown helped make it possible. Get started on your future career in fashion at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-751-9111 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-751-9111. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit hispanicachievers.org. Before I became a graphic designer, I thought I only needed to master the software. The computer can only do so much. But at Sanford Brown, Ms. McCarthy helped me develop my eye for design. She even shared her own professional experiences. The adventures of a real-life graphic designer. Prepare for your future career as a graphic designer at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-918-6444 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-918-6444. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV brought to you on Bright House Cable for the past 14 years. And we talk about issues of politics and community affairs, especially those that are pertinent to the Hispanic community. And I'm here with political consultant uh, Jason Henry and also superstar journalist Maria Padilla. Everybody <laughs> knows Maria. Okay, guys, let's talk about, let, let me launch the first topic and then we'll roll with it. Val Demings, I was so disappointed when she, I could, I was in the car on I-4, and I and I, I had to take a double take. I couldn't believe that she quit. Did you see it on the billboard that Val Demings, is that why you had to take a double take? <laughs> no, <laughs> man, no, man. I just saw it on the radio, I heard it on the radio when I was coming here, and I'm going, wow, yeah. you know, well, why wow. Why couldn't you believe it? Huh? Why couldn't you believe because it? Because I really, really thought that she had a, a good shot. I thought that she had a good shot. If she had the minority community lined up, you know, and you know, and I don't think it was a, a question of money either, because a lot of times, you know, politicians a lot of money can lose. Yeah, it's strategy. That, it has a great deal to do with strategy. Absolutely, uh, you 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 touched on two points that are important. Number one, minority community wasn't necessarily all behind her. There were some sections or sectors of the minority community, specifically African American communities, that said we're actually going to roll with Teresa Jacobs. We're not sure that we are going to give our vote or give our social currency to Val Demings because we're not sure what she's going to do for us. If you notice how her campaign trended toward the end, it was more towards middle of the road. There was really no passion behind what she but was saying. But you know, saying. that's part, that's, you know, I've noticed here in Central Florida that the so-called political consultants that get into these campaigns, they really, really lack grassroots guerrilla strategy. You know, in, in they Val play Demi's it safe, case, they play it safe, you know, and they don't go bam, mm -hmm. you know? In Val Demi's case, she did have a lot of consultants working under her a banner. A lot of DC consultants. And a lot of out of state consultants, you're absolutely right, DC, New York, and so on and so forth. And um, I'm not sure what the out of towners know about. <laughs> A local race, yeah. like the Orange County mayor, it's but a I, very powerful position, powerful yeah. position. But it's still a very local race, and as you know, we're saying sometimes with certain strategies or whatever, you could win that local race even if she was not able to match her dollar for dollar. Uh, I, I, you know, Jacobs. when when you go in to do a fight, you know, when you, and you commit to do a fight, you collect the money to do this fight from small people that that believe in you and then you throw in before the, st the fight starts after collecting the money, you know, it's got to be major disappointment for the next time around. I believe I so. Mean, I, I think that she actually did do some damage to her political brand or, or her profile or however so. you want. Well, mm -hmm. I think Danny touched on it. It's, she had a great race against Congressman Dan Webster. She came she out, did. she, she did. lost, and she still came out looking as if she was the future of the Democratic she Party. She came very close. She did. She Dan came Webster. very close That's to beating why. him. She had, it. she had some out-of-state support, which was important, because even though that was a local race, we're talking about a federal well, federally contested race. Well, exactly, but that's not really even a local race because it's a congressional absolutely. race. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, by local, I mean just in the state of in Florida. Florida. Um, but the second half of that is that she came out looking as if she won. 
Even Definitely. though she lost and, and uh, Webster kept the seat, it was Val Demings. What is she going to do next? With this one, she decided to get in the race really late in the game. It was mm-hmm. January when she filed. Yes. Uh, Teresa Jacobs had already raised, what, 300000 maybe $400,000 yes. when she in got into the race. In 2013. In 2013, a lot of the Democratic endorsements had already gone to Teresa Jacobs. That's Again, fine. I alluded to some of the minority support had already trended in her way. And then it was it was just kind of great. We have Val Demings, and at the end, you're just like, well, what do we have in Val Demings? And that's no diss to Val Demings. It was just that campaign just didn't seem to have any type of ink behind it. It maybe didn't get off the ground. It, I think it, it struggled many times to get off the ground. The and, and I think a lot of it had to do with a lot of the outside advice she may have been getting. And maybe some of that advice may have been conflicting advice, in which case... Running a congressional race is different from running a, an Orange County she mayoral race. She lost the campaign race. manager halfway through. Her campaign manager decided to leave the campaign and to go to D.C. They right, that replaced. happened in the last couple of weeks, right it before did. she resigned. It did. It did. They never replaced the campaign manager. And back to the point about why it damaged her brand, when she announced that she was leaving, she just said, it's not the right race at the right time. Well, how do you decide that in the middle of a campaign? When Once you commit, you got to go. Win, lose, or draw. you got to go. understand some because of the Because people believe polling. in you. Had her down by as much as 16 so points. What? Si- a so 16 that's point Danny's deficit. Disappointment, though, a it is. It, it is. You got to stick. If you make a commitment to people in the community, you got to stick it out, even if you bleed. You got to stick it so out. So I think his passion about why she left is why her brand is damaged. You believe in Val Demings. You I wanted. Did. That you wanted her to lead this county. Yeah. And the fact that she decided I, to drop out not even halfway through, it's, well, what are we going to receive next time? And I think in the end what happens is, in case it's not obvious to a lot of people, by withdrawing from the race, Teresa Jacobs won by default. Because there is no one in that race right now, A, who has qualified. True. There were the only two people who had qualified for that race. Mm-hmm. And nobody else who could have given Teresa Jacobs a run for her money and mm-hmm. for that post. So therefore, Teresa Jacobs is pretty much all by herself out there, which means she's, she's going she's to get it. But I still go back to why did you want Teresa Jacobs out of office in the first place? Can, can you lay out, can you strategically lay out why she's been bad for the county? If you can't can specifically, I? not you personally, I okay, know. Okay, because I'm ready. <laughs> I know, okay, listen. Okay, but before you listen, go there, I'm always I'm accused of being a Republican. Bad necessarily for the county. What I'm saying is, it's bad to have uncontested races. No, I that agree with that. That is a pet peeve of mine. It is yeah. very bad to have uncontested races. And Florida is like, one of the number, the top state in the country for uncontested race. And it also maybe is an indictment on the Democratic Party. Where's the bench for the Democratic Party? If 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 not for Val Demings contesting Teresa Jacobs in the first place, she would have skated to re-election regardless. Because mm-hmm. who, who was going to come up and challenge her? Who was going to challenge uh, Congressman, Gra- uh, not Grayson, the man we were just talking about, Webster. Webster. Who, Webster. For, for a lot of, of these races, the way that the demographics in this state have trended over the past two to three years. There's no reason why this state shouldn't be blue locally, nationally, however you want to frame it. There's no reason just based well, off Orange of Orange County the, is blue. Orange County is blue when you talk about it, uh, voter registration. Voter registration, voter registration. yes. Yeah. We can say that voter registration wise, but when we're talking about a race Orange County mayor, nonpartisan, but we know that the mayor is Republican, well, where, where are we going? Well, point though. Should the nonpartisan race be changed to partisan because that's another issue that may come up in the November election. But why? Well, I mean, because you have a blue county, Mm -hmm. uh, mainly uh, Democratic voters who vote for these nonpartisan races where the folks do in fact belong to a political party and uh, but you don't really know because it's not really part of the race. So should people know that? Should people know that Teresa Jacobs is Republican and Val Demings was a Democrat? I mean, is that important? Well, I mean, I'm asking the question. I don't know. No, I mean, I think, yes, yes. I, the way that politics is run in this country is that you usually go, if, if you're not necessarily an informed voter, you go look at your ballot and you say, okay, just all deep. I'm going to vote all Democrat. I'm going to vote all Republican. But as, as I just, I don't think it's that big of a deal where you don't know. I think if you want to know, you'll know. And the second half of that is who did know? <laughs> I mean, who does know that Teresa That's Jacobs a is a Republican that is a good and that point. Val Demings <laughs> is a Democrat? Um, I just think it's a way to make it partisan so that people can be specifically called out. Yeah. That's coming from a Republican. That's coming from a Democrat in the way you frame it. But as far as how this is going to impact voters, I'm just not that big on it. 
So what don't you like about Teresa Jacobs? What 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 has she I, done? I, 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 what she did, I listen, know. I'm always told that I'm a Republican. Okay. okay, but my position is always my community because I've always been a political advocate Absolutely. for the Hispanic community, regardless of Democrat, regardless of Republican. I had a big issue with Webster. I'm people, you know, Jose comes out here because we're Republican all the time, you know, and I don't fight it. I try to say it's an issue thing. What I didn't like about Webster was his position on immigration. Mm -hmm. I didn't like his position on immigration. And then on top of that, we invited him to speak at an immigration summit, and he didn't even respond in writing to say, hey, I'm going to be in Miami that day, sorry. You know? So that really bothered me because I know he was in town. That was one thing. Um, as far as Theresa Jacobs, we had the uh, redistricting sure. of, of, and that had to be sanctioned by her. Well, it was her plan. No, I, I that did. That was her plan. Her yeah. redistricting plan is the one that won the day. Yeah, and I and I did support um, uh, Pete Clark, and I worked with Pete Clark, and I and I was very That's instrumental District mm -hmm. in, in District Three to get Pete Clark. Now he's a Republican, mm -hmm. but I don't like what Jacob the way she handled it, or allowed it to happen. Okay, I don't like that, and that was against the community because the community that, that didn't have to be done that way. Well, you know? and I, you know what? And, and she may have an opportunity now to come forward and try to address that particular issue, especially so in light of So what you're saying the, is that Teresa Jacobs has an open invite to this show to be interviewed by... Everybody I, has an open has invite. Everybody has an open invite to be here. But I, what I was going to <laughs> say care. is, in light of the Latino uh, redistricting suit that was lost in yeah. the federal district court here in Orlando just the, a couple of weeks ago, um, she had said in one of the last Orange County Commission meetings that she felt that somehow they needed to address that because a sizable number of the population meaning Latino, feel like in, feeling in reality, no matter what no matter what they're putting off the inevitable because the Hispanic community in Orange County is growing at such leaps and bounds yes. they're just putting off the inevitable yes. you know? and Hispanics, what, is that though? what does that look like? What does the inevitable look like? The inevitable that? means that more than 50% of the population of Orange County is going to be Hispanic it's going to happen. I don't know about 50 percent, but I, I but definitely if that see does, 30, 40 percent. If that does, my curiosity is what does that look like politically for Hispanics? Is it just a majority voting district? Is it more Latinos? More it's going to be Ricans more Latinos on? in office. Just more like Latinos when I first came here, there wasn't one Latino mm -hmm. in office, not one. John uh, Quinones was the first one. And wherever Hispanics started to cluster, they started to elect Hispanics. Okay. Listen, yeah. we're, we're going to be running out of time. This was fun, but you know what? We ran out of time. Let's do this yeah. again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Every show, to the listen, let's do a deal. Board. Every show from now on, we do half the show to bantering and beating somebody up. What do you think? Should we, <laughs> should we Jason? I think so. Okay. Yeah, let's go. All right, all right. Before I became a graphic designer, I thought I only needed to master the software. The computer can only do so much. But at Sanford Brown, Ms. McCarthy helped me develop my eye for design. She even shared her own professional experiences. The adventures of a real-life graphic designer. Prepare for your future career as a graphic designer at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-918-6444 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-918-6444. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic Plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit HispanicAchievers.org. I've always had my own style. Yes, she definitely had style. But in fashion merchandising at Sanford Brown, I learned how to make it a career from industry professionals like Ms. Cooper, who was really supportive. Textiles, design, marketing. We teach real fashion skills and the business of fashion. I wanted a career in fashion, and Sanford Brown helped make it possible. Get started on your future career in fashion at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-751-9111 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-751-9111. Welcome back to the show. This is Hispanic Speak Out. My name is Lauren Kianese, and this is my guest, Darina Sackman, 2014 Florida Teacher of the Year. 
and a, one of four national finalists for the National Teacher of the Year. So thank you so much for being here, Jarena. Thank you for having me, Lauren. Great. So today, um, I want to talk about Florida education. So there's a lot of really great news in Florida, and a lot of people don't know about it. So my first question for you, Jarena, is what is some exciting news, some exciting things happening in Florida that we should really be celebrating? That's my favorite part, to go around and tell everybody about such exciting things that are happening. And one of the things that comes to mind right now is Florida has jumped from 11th to 6th in the nation for education quality, wow. which is a wonderful accomplishment. Another one is that we actually have the highest graduation rate in the nation for our Latino population. That's and that is so, oh, oh, it's fantastic because it's increasing and growing every single year. Another wonderful thing is that we are also second in the world to China in fourth grade reading which is an incredible accomplishment. More so, though, is that in our own nation, Florida leads the nation in narrowing the achievement gap between our Caucasian and African-American students. Wow. So in our fourth grade reading and math, and in our eighth grade reading and math, that's incredible accomplishments. That's amazing. And you don't hear that news. You, you hear bad news about Florida. You hear that Florida is the worst, or that we're compared to China. I mean, that that statistics second you said in fourth grade second reading? and fourth grade That's reading amazing. it's incredible because I think what happens is it's very easy to see the bad things first I think right. that's just traditional sometimes in our cultures mm -hmm. but unfortunately we really don't have enough of that good news out there and that's why being an ambassador to education is the Krista McAuliffe ambassador to education I get to go around and share this amazing news I mean yeah. another perfect example is the national education teacher quality they actually talk about how we are twice ranked for excellence in teacher policy. We've had five national finalists, myself included, for National Teacher of the Year. Excellent teaching is going on. Accelerated STEM programs that have gone up in five years, 46% kids are getting interested That's great. in science and math and teachers are passionate about teaching it. There's yeah. such great things if we just reach out to more people and say these are the wonderful things that are happening. Great. Well, we're glad that we have you to spread the good news. So what other things are happening in Florida that you think that, that are happening kind of right now that are really exciting that people should be paying attention to? I love the word exciting also because of change yeah. and that's exciting. Yeah. And one of the things that are happening right now are our Florida standards. Mm -hmm and the changes in our Florida standards, that in fact they're called the Florida standards, yeah. the 99 plus changes that were made because the community and everyone came together and said, what do we need to do to enhance our education system yeah. and our standards so that they meet the needs of every single child? Can you actually explain what a standard is? I sure. think that's something that teachers know, um, but maybe um, viewers who aren't uh, teachers or not, not parents of students in schools might not mm -hmm. know what that term means. And I, well, the best way for me to explain what a standard is is by saying what it is not. Mm -hmm. A standard is not telling me how to teach as an educator. A standard is a wonderful platform. It's a wonderful guide for myself that says this child at this stage should be learning this and should be mastering this at this point. From there, I take that standard and create wonderful lessons of differentiated instruction, culturally, culturally relevant education, and wonderful things that I can do in my own classroom as well as cross-curriculum with other teachers that will help the students think critically, think outside the box, with a non-biased education that these children can make their own choices and become globally competitive. So you said that you can, so you mean teachers are creating these lessons and these curriculums and, and um, and the, they're doing the things that they need to do to make sure their students are learning the standards. Is that right, or is somebody telling you how to teach? No one ever tells me how to <laughs> teach. I, I wouldn't be a teacher if someone told me how to teach. That's the most important thing. And I think the beauty of teaching is allowing to give us the freedom to have our own creativity. And I think it's important to stress that there's a lot of misconception as to what a standard is. A standard is a guideline. And it mm -hmm. says you must ensure that this child can learn to think this way. He can think critically. Mm -hmm. It can actually analyze, synthesize, break down. Yeah. But how you do it, Ms. Sackman, in your classroom, it's really up to you yeah. and it's the magic of that when we interact with the students and we create lessons that students can connect to while utilizing these standards so that each and every child has that equal quality education yeah. within each district of Florida yeah. that's really what it's about and it's a wonderful opportunity and so much professional development has been going on and that's the thing about change right now yeah. with our standards an increased amount of, of of professional development is really helping us and that's what we need to do continue yeah. that because change is good change is progress change right. is work change is good work in progress and great. that's what the Florida standards are doing great so what 
um, can Floridians do to help us during this transition? This is going to be, it, the, the standards are changing for Florida's um, third grade, or well, actually it's kindergarten mm -hmm. through um, 11th grade, right, in math and English only. That's the changes. There's no changes in science or history or art, right? The changes, no, but they will be uh, utilizing the ELA and the math standards okay. because really that's what we need in our classes. Great. In our classes, it's not just the art. We need also the reading and we also need the writing in each pedagogy because that's really what it's about. It's about not just STEM, it's something like steamer, science, mm -hmm. technology, English. Art, math, English, reading, all that, and engineering. Put that all together, and that's what makes a well-rounded education for our children. So what can we do? What can we do to support teachers and schools and students during this change? In empower yourself with the knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think there's, once again, the misconceptions, but what people really need to do is truly, if you don't know and you're unsure about what the standards are, come to schools. Okay. Yeah. Contact people, talk to your districts, talk to your leaders and your legislators. Find out and say, what is it that I need to know so that I can really get involved? Because that's really what it is. Yeah, I know that's they, great advice. So yeah. Thank you so much, Doreen. I really appreciate it. You, you should definitely come back because there's so much more yes. to learn about this topic. And so um, we hope that, that you can come back oh, and tell us more. Anytime. Thank you great. so much for having me. Well, thank you so much um, again to Doreen. And we encourage you to stick around because we're actually going to be talking about education a little bit more with um, state school board member Andy Tuck just after the break. Before I became a graphic designer, I thought I only needed to master the software. The computer can only do so much. But at Sanford Brown, Ms. McCarthy helped me develop my eye for design. She even shared her own professional experiences. The adventures of a real life graphic designer. Prepare for your future career as a graphic designer at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-918-6444 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-918-6444. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit HispanicAchievers.org. I've always had my own style. Yes, she definitely had style. But in fashion merchandising at Sanford Brown, I learned how to make it a career from industry professionals like Ms. Cooper, who was really supportive. Textiles, design, marketing. We teach real fashion skills and the business of fashion. I wanted a career in fashion, and Sanford Brown helped make it possible. Get started on your future career in fashion at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-751-9111 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-751-9111. Hi, this is Margie Vieira. Welcome back to Hispanic Speak Out. We're here tonight with Florida State Board of Education, Mr. Andy Tuck and Ms. Wendy Rivera with the Multicultural Education Alliance. Thank you, Margie, and it's a pleasure to have Mr. Andy Tuck back, and um, I hope that you can continue to come to our show to have discussions about education. But um, the last time, Andy, you were here, we talked about, or you talked about, some of the priorities um, for Florida. And, um, uh, and what I'd like to get into uh, today is um, to discuss Senate Bill um, 1642. If you could just elaborate on that bill that was signed by Governor Scott last month, it was signed into law, and uh, explain to, to our viewers um, and to our community, what does that mean for Florida? First of all, thank you for having me here today. Um, th this is a, a bill that kind of uh, speaks near and dear to my heart because as a parent and a, and a business person from our community and, and a former school board member, I never could grasp the, the concept of, of how schools were graded. We, had, we started off with school grades A through F, mm -hmm. and then came along the Federal No Child Left Behind, which was AYP, and then we had BAM scores a couple years ago that, that rated schools highly effective, effective, um, ineffective, or, or needs improvement. And, and, and none of that really seemed to line up together. It, it, it just, it had a, we had a hard time explaining it to the people outside of the education system. Uh, and so you'd have people asking these questions and, and it would be hard to, 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 to explain that in, in 30 seconds mm -hmm. or less. So Senate Bill 1642 
it, um, it refocuses the school grading formula on student success. It takes into account achievement, learning gains, uh, graduation, and college courses as well as industry certification. One of the other things it does is, is it takes ELL, uh, it includes those students, their achievement after two years, where before it was, it was uh, the, in the first year. Um, the, the, it, it takes into account in learning gains calculation requires students below grade level to, to grow toward grade level uh, performance and, and students that are already at grade level mm -hmm. to, to progress beyond grade level. Uh, there's no bonus factors and there's no auto um, automatic adjustments that could lower grades. Um, the elementary school uh, grading formula is um, English language arts is, is based on it's based on percentages of, of points earned. So at the end of the day, a school will have a certain percentage like you do in on a test. Um, and the, the um, whatever that percentage is based on what the state board sets the cut scores, uh, and I don't think those have been set yet, um, whatever those cut scores are will be what that, that's, that school. That's so is this basically a simplified approach, you know, that's, that's more focused and clear? Right. It's, it's more focused, it's more clear so that lay people like myself mm -hmm. can understand it. And, and, and the folks that aren't affiliated with education directly will, will have a, 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 an easier time understanding it. So Parents a simplified will, grading right. system that for everybody to understand. That is correct. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. And, and um, high school will obviously have more, uh, more um, parts to it than elementary school. Elementary will be English language arts, math, and, and, and a part of science, mm -hmm. where middle school will take in um, civics mm -hmm. and some college uh, college or acceleration courses and in high school will take in U.S. history uh, and um, some accelerated courses and at, um, IB advanced placement and, and graduation rates as well. Well thank you so much Andy. Uh, we are running out of time um, but it's just great uh, what you're doing. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, uh, this Wendy, is definitely else you'd uh, like to add? this. No, this is a discussion that just is very complex and uh, intricate, and we should uh, just have some more of these conversations so that we can just iron out absolutely um, everything. We look forward but to having you back on our show. Thank you so thank much you, Andy. for uh, you. tuning in to Hispanic Speak Out TV, and we will uh, look forward to seeing you next time. I've always had my own style. Yes, she definitely had style. But in fashion merchandising at Sanford Brown, I learned how to make it a career from industry professionals like Miss Cooper, who was really supportive. Textiles, design, marketing, we teach real fashion skills and the business of fashion. I wanted a career in fashion and Sanford Brown helped make it possible. Get started on your future career in fashion at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-751-9111 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-751-9111. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic! Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit hispanicachievers.org. Before I became a graphic designer, I thought I only needed to master the software. The computer can only do so much. But at Sanford Brown, Ms. McCarthy helped me develop my eye for design. She even shared her own professional experiences. The adventures of a real-life graphic designer. Prepare for your future career as a graphic designer at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-918-6444 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-918-6444.